everyone and welcome to Schleichhorst Studios. So back in November, I decided I wanted to make a repaint custom of this horse. Then in December, I decided I didn't like her so I changed her again. And now it's late December and I don't like her. <laughs> she wasn't made with high quality materials, she's kind of falling apart. She's covered in brush strokes, her paint job is quite bad, so is her sculpting, and I just don't like her. So today, to fix this issue, I'm going to be re-customizing her. So yeah. So as you can see, the materials I used were quite low quality. I can peel off her mane and neck with my fingernails which I'm going to do now as I want to give her a different look. Her mane is quite stiff and I don't like it, so I'm going to be changing that along with a couple of other things. So here she is after I scraped off her mane. I had to use the hobby knife a bit, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to sand down the imperfections, and once that's done, I'm going to take out the knife again. But before I can do that, I need to put her in some boiling water to soften up the plastic. So, uh, funny story, while I was carrying this, I spilled it on my foot. But I'm fine. <laughs> Not the best though. <laughs> so she's going to soak for a few minutes. And after about five minutes, I can take her out and the paint is peeling. Oh my gosh, that's so satisfying though. You can see the previous layer of paint under there, but it's kind of strangely satisfying. I'm just peeling up the primer and the paint. <laughs> I peeled off a lot of the paint and now I'm just sanding down the original kind of coat. This is not her original color. This is the original time I painted her. So this would be my third customization repaint of her, but I'm just sanding down the plastic and her coat where the paint things kind of are. And as breathing in plastic and clay and paint particles is definitely not good for you, please wear a dust mask for your safety. And when that's done, she looks like this. Yikes, what have I created? Anyways, I rinse her off in cold water to remove any dust from sanding and here she is <laughs> she looks kind of terrible <laughs> you can see where i used the old clay on her it's again not high quality it's just air dry clay and i wouldn't recommend it but i'm going to fix this with epoxy sculpt i've never actually used epoxy before but i know that you have to scoop out equal sized blobs of type A and type B from the labeled tubs. And when you do that, you then thoroughly mix them together. And then it's time to start sculpting. So I lay the epoxy down on the top of the neck and I use my fingers along with some silicon sculpting tools to refine the shape. Right now, it looks like a blob, and she looks even worse. <laughs> Here's an example of the use of a silicone sculpting tool. So what I like to do is I dip it in water and then 
kind of use it to sculpt the top of the neck. And after a while, I have sculpted the top of her neck and it's ready to be cured. I did decide to add a wither to make it a bit higher. She didn't really have one before, but as you can see, I sculpted the muscle detail and now I'm just going to kind of let her cure by the fire. But before I do that, I'm going to smooth everything over with a wet paintbrush to hopefully reduce the amount of time I have to spend sanding later. I also sculpted on another forelock strand as I thought she needed it. And after that, I only have about this much epoxy left, but I'm going to use it to make chestnuts on her legs. Completely out of frame. <laughs> They're pretty simple to sculpt. You just kind of make a blob and squish it onto her legs and sculpt it a bit from there, but it's not too complicated, so I'm sure you'll figure it out. So now I have her stomach to contend with, so I shaved down the text a bit and now I'm going to re-sculpt her stomach where I shaved it down. And this was honestly kind of hard and probably not the best part about her, but you know, I just used epoxy and my fingers and my silicone sculpting tool to smooth down the clay on her stomach. And it's especially important to use water here as sanding it down is really important. Here's her sculpt work pretty much finished. Apart from her mane, she's pretty much done. And she's looking really good. Made some tail modifications, but I decided to pick those off later. I didn't like them. And now she's ready to cure. So epoxy cures fastest when it's warm, and the fire was out, but the living room is still the warmest place, so I just propped her up on the mantelpiece there. And in the morning, she's ready to go. And I'm sorry for the terrible lighting. <laughs> so now the epoxy is fully cured and ready to be sanded. And that's what I'm going to do now, as that's really key. So it's time to break out the fine grit sandpaper and get cracking on that. And again, please wear a dust mask for your safety. After copious amounts of sanding, it's time to break out the blade and shave down any casting seams or other flaws. And here she is. She's without casting seams or flaws and she's completely sanded. And now we are ready to move on to the next step, which is primer. I rinsed the model off in water just to remove any dust from sanding. And when your model is dry, you can break out the primer. So some people use spray primers, I'm just using acrylic paint by the brand Liquitex as it's actually sandable and it gives the horse a nice uniform color. Spraying it on would probably be best though. And I work over her, giving her one even coat of primer. I didn't prime her face originally, but I did that later. She kind of looks like a paint horse without markings with a brown face. <laughs> Here 
she is with the primer. And now I can pick out imperfections because she's now a uniform color. So it's time to finish sanding. <laughs> When she is flawless and without imperfections and looking good, now I can break out the epoxy again and sculpt on her mane. To sculpt her mane, I lay out thick strands of epoxy and I sculpt the hair texture in them with different size needles. I found this is really the best technique and then I kind of sculpt the epoxy down onto the neck so that the mane is nice and secure. And that's the mane done. I think it's really nice. I like the wild look. <laughs> it definitely fits her forelock and her tail. And now that that is cured, we can move on to giving her her base color using paints. So I use paints by the brand Liquitex and they're just simple acrylics and I mix them together. I'm using red, white, yellow, and brown to make a kind of chestnutty color. And mixing paints does take a little while to get it right and you have to constantly add different colors and shades to get how to get the paints how you want it but I feel like laying down the base color is really important not just going there and trying to you know apply pastels right onto the primer this also makes the pastel stage so much easier as you've already laid down the base When the paints are thoroughly mixed, I add lots of water. And now I can start to paint it onto the model. And this is probably where most viewers will stop watching <laughs> because it looks so wrong. I'm applying watery streaks of paint to this perfectly good model. No, don't worry, after a few coats, the models look really much better than if you were to glob on one thick coat of paint. They're without brush strokes and they just <laughs> look better all around. It does look like I'm creating a monster here, but I assure you I'm not. Well, here she is with one coat of paint and I assure you it gets better. <laughs> I set her under a dust prevention tent made of my two jars of epoxy and a bowl from the kitchen. And that's just so dust doesn't settle on the model, creating an unsightly look or bubbles in the next layers of paint. And it's time to break out the paints again and go for the next layer after about, I don't know, 45 minutes but make sure that you cover them up so they don't dry out. And here she is after about 10 layers of acrylic paint and she's without brush strokes and flaws and she looks so much better than she did before. And now it's time to spray our sealant. So I'm using Mod Podge Matte Sealant, but it's very toxic, so please wear a proper vapor respirator as these fumes are no good for you to breathe in and spray in a ventilated area. So here she is. She does look a bit shiny, but you know, it's my first time working with this sealant and yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to give her soft shades of color using pan pastels, but we have to unbox these. So pan pastels are high quality pastels that apply really nice pigments and shades to the model. These are great for adding soft shades of color and especially key for making a horse look well made. 
you don't have to use pan pastels though from what I've heard these are definitely the best so I'm going to give them a try but look at these though these are so much more high quality than what I was using they screw together like this and they look great and the top one is actually her base color pretty much exactly so I'll be applying that first and they gave me these little extra holes in the pan pastel packaging so maybe I can mix colors in there I don't know I also grind up some of the pastels I were using which are just kind of chalk pastels but I'm mixing up black and white to make a gray shade as I don't have that in this set It's time to start applying. <sighs> I'm kind of nervous. I don't want her to end up looking like a grainy mess. So to start, I put on gloves and I'm using soft, high quality brushes to apply the pastels. So don't touch the model without gloves in this stage as it can cause graininess. I think it's something about like the oils from your fingers, but yeah, so the hand you're holding the model with should have gloves, and the hand you're painting with, you can go with or without. So I start applying a layer of pastel in the same color as the base coat of acrylic paint. And then I start to go a little bit darker, but not going too dark too fast. And don't expect your horse to look great after one layer of pastel you're probably going to need several layers. Here she is after the first layer and she's looking pretty good. There's not much graininess on her either. So now I'm going to take her outside and spray her with some more sealant. And here she is after only one layer of pastel and oh my gosh, I love her. This is like the perfect color. It's like already a really nice dark liver chestnut. She's looking great. So before I move on to paints, I'm just going to do a tiny sneak peek of these items that are part of a much, much, much bigger project I'm going to start working on. We have a sink, a hot water heater, a brush, and some saddle racks. I just gotta move those to the side and I thought I'd do a little sneak peek. And my computer cord and epoxy water. Before I move on to paints though, I'm going to give her a couple more subtle shades of color, darkening around her eyes and muzzle and kind of groin area, I guess that's what it's called, with a darker color. After that I'm going to put on gloves as I don't want the paint getting grainy and I'm turning back to acrylic paints to add the markings. Mix up a grayish, brownish, whitish color and paint the chestnuts. and color for the mane though I later changed the color to a darker one as this felt too gray and I just didn't like it and honestly there was so much back and forth with the paints but here are her final markings I didn't manage to really film it as it was kind of close work right up to my face 
I striped her hooves, added some little ermine dots on her socks, and here's her final mane and tail look. They're this gorgeous flaxen blonde color and I'm really happy with her. Now I used a different varnish as the one I have been using is quite shiny for a matte varnish, though I do highly recommend it. The pastels really stick to it and it's a great varnish, but it's just a bit shiny and I didn't want to amp up the shine on her too much, so I just painted her mane and tail with a more matte varnish. And here she is done. Gosh, I am so happy with her. She is like <laughs> so much better than her previous self. And yeah, I'm just so excited. And I took her outside to take photos and it was actually snowing. So I decided to get some shots with her with her blanket on. And I realized burgundy is definitely her color. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you think that Ruby looks good. Stay tuned for more content featuring the new Ruby and also this shed and pasture. And also stay tuned for my giant project that I have coming up. I will see you in the next video. Um, and also please tell me what you think of Ruby in the comments box below. So thank you again so much for watching and thank you for 100 subscribers. That's amazing. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!